focus of the working group is obsessive compulsive disorder. And you can call it a neurodevelopmental disorder. The prevalence is about 1 to 3 percent in the general population. In about 50 percent of the cases, the disorder starts at childhood. And if it starts at childhood, um, about 40 percent of the cases persist in their symptoms until adulthood. So it's a rather chronic disorder with a very long effect on the, on the whole lifespan. Currently, our Enigma OCD working group includes uh, data from about uh, 45 research samples uh, from 33 research institutes worldwide. Uh, this data comes from 16 countries um, across uh, five continents uh, across the globe. We started with the very general comparison of subcortical volume and cortical thickness and surface area. And in the meantime, we started up with um, secondary proposals. One of this is the domain project that looks at uh, white matter integrity. Uh, another one that's uh, currently ongoing is uh, structural covariance uh, analysis. Um, and we will soon start with a cross disorder analysis uh, in collaboration with the autism and ADHD working group and possibly with the Tourette's working group. One uh, surprising finding is that um, we see, for instance, uh, smaller hippocampus in, in adult OCD patients, well, hippocampus is uh, known for depression and for other mental disorders, but not for OCD. So there have been many, many imaging studies in OCD and hippocampus was never part of the whole disease model. So I think that's a more non-specific finding. Well, another very specific finding, uh, or at least a more specific finding, is uh, that the adult OCD patients have uh, a bigger pallidum and, and the children with OCD have uh, a bigger thalamus. So these subcortical findings are rather specific for, uh, for OCD and these also fit with what we know from the past. So it's not that it's um, unexpected, but uh, it makes us more confident that this is real. So there's so many imaging in OCD and, and very often you doubt is it a real finding or is it a false positive finding and these findings I believe are real. We have both children, adolescents and adults with uh, OCD, so that gives many opportunities to look at the different stages of development and, and disease. And I think it's important that within Enigma we really try to get a lot of these uh, kids and adolescent data, mm. because in these subjects um, yeah, you have more chance that you look at vulnerability factors instead of yeah, consequences of being mentally disturbed for many, many years. So I think it's important that we try to, to have a big age range within our samples. So we really um, stimulate people who have both the very young but also the very old subjects uh, because it gives more information about the lifespan. And interestingly, the results that we do see in children are often bigger and larger than those in adults. And even though the sample size is actually smaller, so that's really interesting to, to see and to further investigate. I think what the challenge is that uh, many sites have data, but many sites also have not the the people to work on analysis so for some sites it's really hard to do the analysis themselves so in that case we we do it for them uh, or we at least give some help in, in working on the data so i think that that's really challenged that that many people think it's very important um, but yeah since there's a lot of big funding for all the different sites um, yeah it's a challenge to, to to uh, keep on, on planning and, and get the deadlines you, you make. Yeah, and more practical challenges are, uh, for example, that all these different sites use different scanner types. So in your analysis, you obviously want to control for that, but that's uh, really difficult. So there are different ways of controlling for different scanner types. And the ones that we use now is controlling for sites as a dummy variable. 
but um, there are, I think, more uh, advanced methods now to control for this and we will definitely uh, be looking at that as well for our future projects. So um, including scanner type as a random fact factor in a mixed model uh, analysis instead of a dummy variable. With respect to uh, comorbidities, it's really interesting to look at uh, comorbid depression, comorbid anxiety in adults and maybe more like uh, Tourette syndrome and autism and ADHD, but not all of these sites have this data. So it's really, um, it makes it difficult to interpret certain findings if you don't have this specific uh, data. I think we have yeah, most uh, OCD expertise teams worldwide and we really started a close collaboration now so we now also started new projects and getting new data um, that are very relevant for harmonization and data collection so for instance harmonized collection of the phenotype, harmonized collection of neurocognitive profiles, but also harmonized collection of imaging data. Um, and now we start off with, with five sites within the Enigma OCD working group, and if we succeed in getting some harmonization, then I hope we can translate this to all the other Enigma OCD sites, so that in the end we can have prospective um, big data sets instead of working only with old data. So I think that's the good thing of a worldwide collaboration like this, that, that people start trusting each other and start building up new uh, data collection together. In respect uh, to recruitment, I would say we have um, many sites from Europe and many sites from North America. I think uh, Latin America and Africa are a bit underrepresented. And Australia. And Australia, of mm -hmm. course. So I would uh, welcome those teams to join in Iqmao City, definitely. <laughs>